Stay tuned for Nero Wolf. If the chimes shudder a little on Sunday afternoon, well, they know there's mystery in store Sunday with men of action like Mike Waring, better known as the Falcon, who brings his fearless and romantic touch to the solution of another mystery. After the Falcon, it's high adventure. Then the big guy steps in. The new private eye, Charlie Wilde, concludes a few casual homicides. The chimes mean mystery and action this Sunday afternoon on NBC. Transcribed. My boss is the smartest and the stubbornest, the fattest and the laziest, the cleverest and the craziest, the most extravagant detective in the world, Nero Wolf. <laughs> It's the adventure of Stamp for Murder with that brilliant, eccentric, private detective, orchid fancier and gargantuan gourmet, Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Instructions for this morning, Archie, your notebook, please. First, Mr. Salen's back. Inform him that the Long Island peafowl he sent were most unsatisfactory. Peafowl's breast flesh is not sweet and tender unless it is well protected from all alarms, especially from the air, to prevent nervousness. Long Island is full of airplanes. Look, Mr. Wolf, I, I shall you... want a dozen chickens that have been raised on blueberries. And a fresh-killed lamb for tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Wolf, please listen. There's... Uh... Mr. Goodwin, be quiet. And then dinner on the following day becomes a problem. Mr. Wolf, dinner any day is going to be a problem if we don't pay Thousandback's bill. And pay it. With what? The bank account's empty. Ridiculous. They were $4,000 yesterday. But you bought that shipment of orchid bobs from wine old Gluckner. Mr. Wolf, we need money. You've got to stop eating and drinking beer long enough to earn some... Phew. You're an alarmist. Will you, for the love of heaven, stop turning down clients and turn an honest dollar? I've got a couple of prospects right outside the door. Send them away. No, sir. Send them away. Tell them I've gone to Egypt. Nothing doing, sir. Confound you, Archie. Obey order. Send them away. Miss Kent, Mr. Rodman, come, please. Thank you. Confound you, Archie. You're mutinous. Yes, sir, and you're stuck with it. This is Miss Gloria Kent and Mr. Rodman. They arrived as advertised with a pressing problem. Good morning. You people are here by sufferance only. I shall speak to Mr. Goodwin about it later. Yes, indeed. I don't like pressing problems, Miss Kent. What are yours? My father. Indeed? I'm not a court of domestic relations, Miss Kent. What did your father do? Beat you? Withhold your earnings? Discourage your suitors? Mr. Goodwin should have informed you this office does not undertake cases involving marital or family problems. But that's not... If Mr. Goodwin had not been beguiled by your pretty face... He might have warned you and avoided this embarrassment to you and annoyance to me. Now, 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 take it easy, take it easy. How many times have I told you you don't know how to handle women? Then suppose you let Miss Kent handle me. Well, it's simply this, Mr. Wolf. I had some money my mother left me. My father's just spent it without my permission. I want it back for a scandal. Thanks, Miss Kent. How much? How spent? Ten thousand dollars. Father bought a treasure map. Indeed, from whom? A pair of swindlers named Cross and Halleck. They've driven him crazy, talking about fortune salvaged from the SS this and the SS that. He's got a map and old letters he studies. He's childish. Many fortunes have been recovered. Many more are wait on the sea bottom. How do you know your father has been duped? Well, I know. You do, Mr. Rodman. Yes. Cross and Halleck bought some old letters from me, written by my grandfather from Hawaii. They used them to manufacture the map and evidence. And that's what they sold to Kent. Father thought he was being so clever. He had the paper analyzed. Of course, the document research laboratory said the letters were genuine. They were. But something new had been added. I'd have never known if Mr. Rodman hadn't told me. You are a party to the swindle, Mr. Rodman? I was not. I never knew what they were up to. Mr. Wolf, you've got to help me. I can't do anything with Father. I can't convince him. Even Mr. Rodman can't... No, Miss Kent, I'm sorry. This is not for me. But you must. You must. Not in my office, madam. No tears. Please, please, Archie, stop her. Okay, okay, okay. Archie, when Miss Kent has finished her disgraceful exhibition, show them out. (laughs) Oh, dear. Walk out on the... Easy, easy, easy. I know him. I know him. You don't. He gets into a panic when women cry, or else he's curious about what Fritz is cooking for lunch. Now, just uh, wait a minute, please. 
Oh, aren't you ashamed of yourself walking out like that on that poor kid? That hysterical gamma. <laughs> She's lost all of her money. She needs help. I charge high fees, Archie. So charge a small fee. Do you want her to starve? Good heavens. Starve? How monstrous. I'm not kidding. While you'll be in here smelling your dinner, she and her father will be starving. I thought you were bringing me a paying client. Well, this is different. She's, uh... You're beautiful. She's... Archie, you're impossible. Oh, very well. Go back into them. Get names, addresses, facts. I am not committed to Miss Kent's case, but we'll see. Be a tribute I pay for your weakness for a pretty face. <laughs> Rodman and Gloria Kent were gone, however. So all I had were the few facts they'd given me before they met Wolf. I felt guilty about that when he came back into the office and sat down in his specially built chair. He closed his eyes and I glared at him. Well, how much of you is awake? Mr. Wolf. Uh. Well, they disappeared. Did you tell me you were going to help this girl just to get her out of the office or did you mean it? You're a gadfly. No, sir. No, sir. You made a promise and you're stuck with it. What did you get from Rodman? Name, address, occupation. He's a librarian, that's all. Very careless, Archie. You missed a significant point. Such as, uh... How did Rodman discover the letters he sold were being altered by forgery and used for swindle? How did he locate the Duke, Mr. Kent? Uh, I guess you're right. I'll ask him next time. But uh, what about now? Are you going to get Gloria's money back? I assume you call Miss Kent Glorious in order to annoy me. It does. Stop it. Get Cross and Halleck. Our way. You'll find them at the Hotel Bogart. <laughs> Wrong, sir. According to my notes, their address is... Never mind their address. The Hotel Bogart is the headquarters for successful confidence tricksters. They celebrate their victories there while the money lasts. You will possibly find Cross and Halleck drinking whiskey or lunching, probably... Booth. I located Cross and Halleck in the hotel bar and lured them back to our place on 35th Street. Wolf was sitting behind his desk with his hands crossed on his impressive middle, at peace with his lunch and the world when I ushered them in. He sat bolt upright and scorched me with a look. Good afternoon, Mr. Wolf. The tall one's name is Cross, the short one is Halleck. They uh, want to help me invest my money. Gentlemen, Mr. Nero Wolf. Huh? Oh, Nero Wolf. Hey, what is this? Confound you, Archie. How drunk are they? Not too drunk for business. Let's get out of here. Come on. Wait a minute. Chill, duck, decoy. You want me to keep him here, Mr. Wolf? Not by violence, Archie. Come back here, gentlemen. Unless you want some years in the state penitentiary. Well, this what? You got nothing on us, Wolf. Nothing. I have the Kent case. The Kent? That's a laugh. We're sitting pretty, sitting pretty. You are not, sir. You imagine you possess legal immunity. Mr. Kent believes you are a grotesque balderdash and will not sue for fraud. Miss Kent cannot sue because she is reluctant to accuse her father of wrongfully obtaining her money. Ergo, you think you are invulnerable. Now, listen. But you forget me. I'm a detective with a fee to earn. A big fee. Quiet, Archie. I am determined to get that fee. Therefore, as Miss Kent's agent, I can and will bring action against you. I'm indifferent to her tears or her father's disgrace. I'm indifferent to anything outside of money. You will return the $10,000 to me at once, sir, or you will be in jail by morning. You mean that? I do, Mr. Cross. Alec, yeah. come here. Come on, honey. Uh, okay. Here, Mr. Wolf. Halleck and I have decided we don't want to get in any trouble with you. Here's your ten grand. Uh, let's have it. Give the dough to Kent, Mr. Wolf, and get the letters and map back for us. You've got a reputation for being tricky, but honest. We trust you. Come on, Halleck, let's go. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, how about that? Preposterous. No, sir. Take a look. $10,000, genuine coin of the realm. That man crosses a fool. Does he imagine I am to be fooled so easily? What do you mean he left the money? He surrendered too quickly, Archie. Too easily. And had money in the envelope. He was carrying all ready to refund. Why? Well, maybe he's got a better sucker. I heard him mention a Ben Sanford. Nonsense. Does he need Kent's forged letters and map to cheat this Ben Sanford? Couldn't he prepare another set? Uh, I guess you're right. Something's fishy. In any event, it's no concern of mine, thank heaven. Uh, why not? 
I'm not committed to Miss Kent in any way. As a favor to you, I undertook to regain her money. I have done that. You may take it back to her and obtain the forged papers in return. But, uh... Silence, Mr. Goodwin. Go to your redhead charmer. Leave me in peace. I intend to spend this afternoon with my new world atlas. I left him 3,000 miles up the Amazon with his magnifying glass and drove up to East 69th Street. The Kent house was a broken-down little brownstone, and as I went up the stoop, the door opened and Gloria Kent burst out like a skyrocket. Hey, Miss Kent, easy, easy. Let go of me. Let go. What's wrong? What's wrong? Wrong. Wrong. Nothing is wrong. Nothing at all. Well, how about seeing your father? I want to see my father. Come inside. Oh, for the love of heaven. Come inside, Mr. Goodwin. I'll introduce you. He's in a back room. Come right through the living room. What else came through this living room? A hurricane? No, Mr. Goodwin. Something else. There's my father, Mr. Goodwin. What in the devil? He's dead. His throat's cut. Father. This is Archie Goodwin from Nero Wolf's office. He and his boss refused to help while they could. Maybe he can help you now. Stop it. All I'm good for now is revenge. That's all. Stop Archie. it. Stop it and look at me. When did it happen? I don't know. When did you find him? Just now. Keep looking at me. Who went through this house like a hurricane? You? No. Where did you go after you left the office? To the laboratory. What lab? Argument research. The, the place that checked the map. How long were you there? Until an hour ago, I was with Mr. Rodman. Keep looking at me. Uh, and then? I had lunch. With Rodman? Alone. And then I came home. All right. All right, now listen to me. I want you to go to Mr. Wolf's house right now. Uh, Have you got a cab there? Yes. All right, take a cab. I've got to stay here, but I'll call Mr. Wolf and tell him you're on the way. Now, get. I called Wolf, told him everything, and he instructed me to advise Inspector Kramer who arrived with the homicide squad. I gave the inspector everything while the squad photographed and measured, print dusted and detected. At 3.30, Kramer took me back to the house on 35th Street for a fight with Wolf. It's a great story, Wolf. Great. Kent buys a phony treasure map. Everybody knows it's phony except Kent. But Cross and Halleck try to buy it back, and Kent gets himself murdered. Did you find the map and letters in the house, Inspector? No, no, I didn't. The killer was after the map. A phony map? Certainly. Why? Well, if we knew that, we would know why Cross and Halleck so willingly paid back the money and why Kent was murdered. Maybe it's not phony. I'd better see the girl now. Oh, you fancy her for the murder? Well, I'll know after I ask a few questions. Tonight. She's had a shock, Mr. Kramer. She needs rest. Look, Wolf, I want her. Why bother with her when there's so much to be done? Yes, such as? Cross and Halleck, find them. And the mystery man they spoke of, Ben Sanford. These are the men you want now, not this poor, overwrought girl. Yeah. All right. The girl will be here for questioning tonight, though, huh? Tonight, Mr. Kramer. Okay. You'll hear from me later on. <laughs> well, you buffaloed him out of that, okay. Say, uh, why don't you want her questioned? Is she guilty? I don't know. Well, what did she say when she got here? She said nothing. She never arrived. She never what? She never arrived. Well, then why did you tell Kramer she was sitting? Would he have the truth? <laughs> she must be found. More important, we must learn why Forge letters and Forge map produces turmoil. Find the killer and you find the map. You said so. I said the reverse, which is an altogether different statement. Archie, I want a photograph of that map. Get it. Oh, sure, sure. Any particular camera you want me to use? You'll find a photograph of 200 Vanderbilt Street. Are you kidding? The lab cannot check the authenticity of old papers without photographing them in ultraviolet light, infrared light, and so on. If this document research lab has examined those papers, they will have photographs. Get them! He got out of his chair and waddled back to the house elevator. It was four o'clock and time for his regular afternoon session with the orchids. I drove down to the document research laboratory on Vanderbilt and got such a shock that I grabbed the office phone and dialed Wolf at once. Mr. Wolf, Archie here. 
What's the matter? Are you lost? No, sir. No, sir, but I found something. Photographs? No, Mr. Wolf. I don't think you'll ever see any photographs of the Kent app. I don't think any were taken. Indeed. But uh, guess who runs the document research laboratory? No, 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 no. Don't guess. You probably know. A man named Ben Sanford, and he's sitting right here looking at me. Bring him home with you. Home? But it's four in the afternoon. This is the sacred hour when you pray over your orchids. Then Mr. Sanford can join the ceremony. Hey, how about this place? How about it? There must be a million flowers up here. <laughs> no, not flowers. Orchids only. Mr. Wolf has 10,000 plants. Never saw anything like it. And you never will again, brother. Hey, uh, what, uh, what kind is that on the bench? Oh, that. That's our pride and joy. Odontoglossum harianum. Of them, the Van Petersirana, and the pink ones are the Coelogiani uh, panderatas. Now, the large object, mulching flower pots, is Nero Wolf. Mr. Wolf, Ben Sanford. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. I came along to be obliging. I've got nothing to say about anything. How much have you offered Cross and Halleck for their treasure map? No comment. Mr. Manford, I'm going to make some assumptions. I assume that you are not, in fact, a document expert, but an accessory to the fraud of Halleck and Cross. No comment. That you actually prepare fraudulent maps for those swindlers, and then in the guise of an expert, guarantee their authenticity. No comment. For this you must answer. You did guarantee the authenticity of the map and letters can't bought. It's on record. All right, I did. Then will you admit they were forged? What, are you, a comic? No. You guarantee the value of the Kent map? Yes. As an expert? Yes. Then you've convicted yourself of murder. What? Murder? What is this? Mr. Kent was murdered, sir. Evidently for the map and letters he bought. But of all persons involved, you alone believe in the value of the map. No one else does. Therefore, you alone would have murdered Ken for the map. Well, for the love of... Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> chew it over, brother. Chew it over. Either way, he's got you. Okay. Okay, you... You want me to level? Here it is. Level, Archie? Okay, boss. Thief-type talk. It means tell the truth. It's like you say. The letters were bought from Rodman. I forged the map and evidence onto them. I guarantee them to Kent. The swindle. The letters are without value? Oh, sure, they're old, that's all, from 1851. Just tired family gossip and stuff. Indeed. There we have the problem again, Archie. Mr. Kent is swindled with a map and letters that are known to be worthless. He alone believes the fantasy of the treasure. There isn't any treasure, never was. Yet Cross and Halleck refunded the swindle money so eagerly. It is obvious they want those worthless documents back badly. Someone else wants them so bad, he murders Mr. Kent. Why? I don't know. Ah, gee, we must find the girl. There's a chance she turned to Mr. Rodman for refuge. I'm sorry, you'll have to go there at once. If the girl isn't there, bring Rodman. Yes? Hello, Rodman. Remember me? I'm Archie Goodwin from Nero Wolf's office. Oh. Oh, yes, of course. I came to get Gloria Kent. There's been a change in plans. Tell her to out, please. Gloria? She's not here. Why should she be? Haven't you heard? And what? Well, I guess you'd better come down and see Wolf. Uh, Mr. Goodwin, I'm afraid I can't. I'm rather busy. Look, Rodman, maybe you ought to know. Old man Kent was murdered. What? Yes, yes, just after you and Gloria left us. Kent murdered? Well, I... well this is awful, Mr. Goodwin. You it's... want to see Mr. Wolf now? Get your hat. Murder. Well, believe me, I never wanted this. I, I'm going to tell Nero Wolf the whole mess. Every word of it. Okay, then. Come on, let's go. Oh, yes, of course. Just a minute. I'll get my hat and the murdered Kent. I never dreamed. <sighs> come on, Rodman. Come on, Rodman. Come on. What? I didn't hear you. Oh, Rodman. What the... Oh, Rodman. What next? Come on, come on. This is Nero Wolf. Archie here. A tough break. Yes? While I was waiting for Rodman at the front door, he went into the bedroom for his hat. The killer was there. How do you know? He cut Rodman's throat. 
Kev. The back window was open. It's the ground floor apartment. He was out and gone before I had a chance. Archie, where were your wits? Let me alone. I've had a man murdered 20 feet from me. You think I'm cheering? Mr. Kramer is here, and he has news for us, Archie. He could not keep Cross and Halleck in their apartment. They had not been home all day. The maid informed him that she was waiting for her weekly salary. Well, so what? She was most angry and peppery. Mr. Kramer informs me. Red pepper? Exactly. Okay. Okay, maybe I know what you mean. I'll try to deliver the goods this time. Goodbye. I drove down to the apartment house on Gramercy Square where Cross and Halleck lived, took the elevator up to the 10th floor, found the right door, and slipped in with a pass key. Come on out. Come out wherever you are. I know you're in here. You fooled Kramer pretending to be the maid, but you didn't fool Wolf. You'd better... Gloria! Cut it out! Cut it out, you idiot! Lay off! Archie, Archie, you dope Archie Goodwin from Nero Wolf's office. Remember me? Go. Give me the gun, Gloria. Give to me. Oh, that's right. Who, uh, who did you think I was? Alex. Oh, brilliant. So Wolf figured you out, huh? Oh, you are a brave girl. They killed your father. You came up here and waited for them. You were going to kill them right back, huh? Oh, that red-headed temper. And you bluffed Kramer into thinking you were the maid. I had to do something. It was the only thing I could think of. To come here and kill him. Well, you're coming home with Archie. And just remember one thing. When Wolf's working for you, don't try to do any thinking. It only gets in Wolf's way. I got Gloria Kent to the house at 7 o'clock. Parked the car, brought her into the office, and got the shock of my life. There was a convention on. Wolf was there with Inspector Kramer representing the cops. Cross, Halleck, and Sanford were there representing the crooks. When Kramer saw Gloria, he scowled first at her and then at Wolf. So it was a slick one after all, Wolf. You didn't have the girl. You had no intention of producing her. Please, Mr. Kramer, that can wait. There are other matters more important. I dine at eight. That leaves me one hour to solve your murders. Murders? More than one? Yes, two. Elmer Rodman. I haven't good one if you... Please, Mr. Kramer, not now. First, Miss Kent. Good evening, Miss Kent. I presume you have met these gentlemen, Cross, Halleck, and Sanford? I... I... Yeah, I'll take your purse, please. Huh? Well, why? I... Uh, don't think me as naive as Mr. Goodwin, Miss. When you left your home after the murder of your father, you took the map and letters with you. They are in your purse well, now. That's true. Archie, the purse. Thank you. We have here an interesting situation. There exists some old letters and map, forged and fraudulent, which are worth $10,000 and more to Cross and Halleck and worth two murders to a killer. Why? There must be something of great value in the letters. Yes, such as? Something which Mr. Sanford could not see, although he worked the document closely. Yet something which could be made manifest. What is the answer, Miss Kent? You know it? I swear I don't. Secret writing, Archie. Bring the chafing dish from the dining room. Secret writing? Well, I saw nothing when I worked on those letters. Naturally, Mr. Sanford, the writing is invisible. That heat is an agent. It makes most forms of secret writing visible. The chafing dish, boss. Thank you, Archie. Place it before me and light it. Right. Now I open Miss Kent's purse. From it, you see, I withdraw these ancient letters which he took from her house. After her father's murder. That's not true. Archie. That's enough, Gloria. That's enough. From now on, you just listen. We remove the letters from the envelope and toast them gently. The secret ink vintage 1851 will easily succumb to the agency of heat. Those envelopes will catch fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. They're caught. Don't be upset, Mr. Cross, Mr. Halleck. The envelopes. Uh. He'll burn safely in the dish. We can concentrate on the writing. Watch closely. I don't want to be accused of trickery. You fat fool. The envelopes are everything. Put them out, Sanford. Don't sit there. Put them out. Why, Mr. Haddock? Well, the stamps, the missionaries, they're worth a fortune. The missionaries? Of course. You know that. 
Mr. Cross knows. So does Mr. Sanford, right? Yeah, yeah. Cross Sanford knows, you old fool. Let me... Uh, Mr. Sanford is not alarmed. Why not, sir? I don't know what you're talking about. Fifty or a hundred thousand dollars is burning before your eyes, Mr. Sanford. Cross and Halleck are burning their fingers, putting out flaming envelopes. And you sit there quite indifferently. Why? Well, I... I... You know the value of the missionary stamps on the letters you bought from Rodman... But you know these aren't the real letters. Isn't that it? Not the real letters? I told you I'm tough to crack, Wolf. You didn't fool me with those dummies. Dummies? How do you know? Mr. Cross didn't know. Mr. Haddock didn't know. How did you? Well, I... uh... I'll tell you, sir. Only one man could know I was framing Miss Kent as a decoy. Only one man could know I prepared these dummy letters and pretended to take them from her purse. And that is the killer. The man who murdered her father. And stole the map and letters this morning. You, sir, Mr. Sanford. Well, I'll be... Mr. Kramer, there's your killer. You'll find the missing map and letters on him or concealed in his home or office. You won't need the evidence anyway. Look at his face. He's self-confessed. Self-confessed like fun? He was (laughs) booby-trapped. No, Mr. Craner. Not a complicated case, really. Very simple. Elmer Rodman sold a packet of old family letters to the swindlers for a small sum. They used the letters to perpetrate their fraud on Miss Kent's father. And the stamps on the letters were valuable? They were a special Hawaiian issue 1851, Miss Kent. Nicknamed missionaries, because missionaries used them for writing home. They are extremely rare stamps worth upward of $25,000 each. Hey, no wonder they were worth two murders. We found five of them on Sanford. Excellent. Somewhere or other, Rodman discovered the value of the stamps after he sold the letters. In his effort to get them back, he communicated his discovery to the swindlers, Cross, Halleck, and Sanford. So that's why they refunded the money so fast. Precisely. In an effort to have the sale rescinded. Rodman saw that Kent and tried to convince him of the fraud. Alas, he would not listen to the truth, Miss Kramer. Oh, I get it. And while the others were hassling around, Sanford tried to steal a march and quietly resorted to murder. Ah, uh, there you have it. <laughs> Great job, boss. Great job. So Gloria not only gets her ten grand back, but uh, five times twenty-five, which is about a hundred and twenty-five thousand worth of goodies. Now, figuring your rates by the hour, that means you've done a gratis job worth about. Miss um, Kent. I did not, nor will I demand a large fee for what I have done. I will not go back on my word. But I can beg for a favor. I'll only be too happy to... Wait, wait, wait. I ask something that will not be easy to grant. What is it? Will you use your red hair, your pretty face, your admirable figure, and your ample fortune to lure Mr. Goodwin away from this house tonight? I would like to enjoy my dinner in peace. <laughs> that won't be difficult, Mr. Wolf. <laughs> Let's have an understanding right now, Gloria. Difficult for you or for me? I'll be delighted. <laughs> Indeed. To spend an evening with Mr. Goodwin, there is only one word for you, Miss Kent. Intrepid. You have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Tonight's story by Alfred Bester was based on the famous characters created by Rex Stout, produced by Edwin Fadiman, and directed by J. Donald Wilson. In the cast were Wally Mayer as Archie Goodwin, and Gene Bates, Howard Nair, Jay Novello, Larry Dobkin, Bill Johnstone, and Herb Vigran. Music by Joseph Enos. Next week, at this same time, Nero Wolf and Archie will bring you... The Case of the Careworn Cup. John Stanley speaking. The preceding was transcribed. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. The chimes ring for Dennis Day and Judy Canova tomorrow night on NBC. Also, Judy Canova prepares to go operatic tomorrow because her special guest is Itzio Pimza. This is Chester William Bendix Riley. The man called X follows on NBC. <laughs> <laughs>